Welcome to Brain Health Week. Brain Health Week is an, maybe an international week to promote brain health. And I'm here every day this week to promote brain health with you. And so um, I'm Dr. Regina Kep. I'm a clinical geropsychologist and I specialize in mental health and brain health for older adults. So today's brain health tip is to exercise. So experts agree that exercise is one of the best things that you can do for your brain health. And this starts even earlier than older adulthood. Experts are also sharing with us that the sooner you engage in exercise and other tips around brain health that we'll be talking about all week long, more optimally, your brain will age. So what do I mean by exercise? So all of the tips that I'm sharing today and the rest of this week will all have evidence based to support it. Exercise is essential for brain health. And I'm going to share a couple of studies. So one study I'm going to talk about is in the XX brain by Lisa Mosconi. And she's a neuropsychologist and the director of women's brain initiative at Weill Cornell Medical College in New York. She has this book called the XX brain. But let me share a little bit of, uh, about what a study she talks about in her book. So older adults were assigned brisk walking or yoga. And a year after this assignment, this group of people is going to do yoga. This group of people is going to take a brisk walk. They found that a year later, the stretching and yoga group showed one to 2% brain shrinkage, which is normal in older adults. So that's not a bad thing, that's a typical thing. But what they did find on the other hand with the other group, that the walkers on the other hand exhibited a 2% increase in brain size. So stretching alone helps the brain just stay status quo, no worse. But brisk walking, they found, um, exhibited a 2% increase in brain size. That's not the only study that looks at exercise and, um, and brain health. Other studies have found like neurogenesis, which means that our neurons will regenerate or continue to develop um, in, even in older adulthood with running and brisk walking. So brisk walking and strength-based exercises are also really important. So the ultimate message, the take-home message is that scientists put together in this, um, the AARP has a global brain health council and they brought all of these experts together, including Lisa Mosconi, the woman um, whose book I was just showing you including her and other national and international experts on brain health, got them all together and they created some recommendations. And here, is the re here are the recommendations that they came up with that studies show you get the optimal brain health with these particular exercises. And I'm gonna share with you what they are. So one is purposeful exercise, meaning like brisk walking, taking a strength-based class, um, cycling, probably even swimming, um, a purposeful exercise uh, of 150 minutes a week. So that's 30 minutes a day, five days a week, or however else you want to um, break up your 150 minutes. But it's 150 minutes of weekly moderate intensity aerobic activity and two or more days of moderate intensity muscle strengthening activities. So I'm really looking forward to my yoga studio reopening um, and because I get a lot of strength and uh, based activity in that particular yoga class. It's a rigorous, uh, pretty tough yoga class. And, and this morning I did a brisk walk for three miles with my husband. So hopefully, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be getting this, these recommendations in as well. But that's not all. So it's 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity, like brisk walking, cycling, swimming, and two or more days of moderate intensity muscle strengthening activities. And the third thing is a physically active lifestyle. So 
what does that mean? That means you take the stairs instead of the elevator if you can, if your knees are okay. That means that you might park far away from in the parking lot from where you need to go so you get more steps in. That means maybe you wear a, a watch that calculates your steps and you get 10,000 steps a day just so that you're moving around. That means that maybe you do the dishes after dinner instead of letting them sit there, there's some activity happening. Perhaps you um, go play with your grandkids outside and that will get you the best bang for your buck with your brain health. So comment below and tell me what you are gonna do this week related to exercise. And you don't have to shoot for the moon, right? What I'd suggest is if you're already doing two days a week of brisk walking, maybe add a third day. If you're already doing 30 minutes of activity, maybe you add 10 minutes to that. So you do 40 minutes instead. So make it a bite-sized achievable goal. The, the bottom line is that you just do it. We don't want you to like set a goal that you're not gonna reach. Just add a little bit on to what you're already doing and you'll start to generate more benefits from that as well. What I also wanna say is brain health is good for mental health. They're really connected. And so just exercise will also help you manage stress and depression and anxiety. And if you're caregiving can help manage some of the stress with that and just get you some time. It also helps if you do it outside, which is what my podcast last week was all about, which is being out in nature, you also get all sorts of added benefits. So comment below and tell me what you plan to do. And if you have some medical challenges, maybe consult with your doctor, perhaps ask for a referral for a physical therapist to do an assessment of where your body is at and what exercises might be healthy for your body. Even consulting with a physical therapist and getting just some at-home exercises could be so great for your physical health and your brain health. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.